Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I'm your host, Renee Bauer, and I have a treat for the guys today. I've had listeners since I launched the podcast reach out to me and say, where is the episode for us? So this one is it. Let me introduce you to today's guest. He is Connell Barrett, who is a New York City dating coach who's helped thousands of men all over the world find their soulmates while dating with integrity and authenticity. Connell's been featured on the Today Show, Access Hollywood, and in publications such as Cosmopolitan, Maxim, Playboy, and Oprah Magazine. He is the founder and executive coach of Dating Transformation, where he teaches men to unlock their most confident, authentic selves so that they can connect with a wonderful woman without any creepy pickup lines. It's dating with total integrity. He's the exclusive dating coach for the high-end dating app called The League, and he writes a weekly advice column called Ask the Dating Coach, and has a book coming out this May by Simon & Schuster entitled Dating Sucks, But You Don't Need uh, you don't need to. The essential guide for men looking for love in the Me Too era. He says he can fix almost any dating problem because he's had every dating problem. So we have with us today the real life hitch. Welcome. Renee, I'm super psyched to be with you. Thank you for having me on. Oh, no problem. So I have to ask the first question is how the hell did you get into this line of work? Well, my story starts with divorce. So this is the perfect podcast for me. When I was in my late 20s, I barely dated in high school and college. I was naturally introverted and shy, and I never had somebody teach me, quote unquote, how to talk to girls. And I finally found one woman who wanted to be with me, and I married her, and she dumped me nine weeks later. Oh, no. Yes. And I like to joke at the time that it was over so quickly, we fought for custody of the wedding cake. Nine weeks is fast. Um, wow. And I was driving in my red Honda Civic. The back seat was filled with unwrapped wedding gifts that I was oh. taking back to Dillard's department store for store credit because I had no money. I was in graduate school. And at that, at that moment, I just felt rejected by all women. And I said, you know what? I don't want to feel this lonely again and this rejected. And I decided that I was going to do what it took to gain confidence and learn what works with women. So I started looking on the internet, looking for coaches, everybody from classy dating coaches to cool self-help coaches to the sketchiest pickup artists you've ever, you're ever gonna meet. <laughs> I, worked, I worked with all of them. I learned the dark arts, the light arts, and I finally kind of cracked the code over the course of several years and a lot of effort. And that's how I came here. I, I said, the next time I get married or when I settle down, I want it to be from a place of, of options and, and choice. Mm -hmm. And my marriage was me settling for what I thought was the best I could get. And I think she could feel that I was a needy, insecure man. And she said, no thanks. And I said, okay, I'm gonna date from a place of options and confidence and abundance. And that's how I became a dating coach. All right then, so you said that you, um, you were trying to understand what women want. want. So, so what is it that we want? What I found that women want is, an authentic, real man who has strength, has a backbone. He knows who he is, and he's able to give women that sort of masculine centeredness that women love and enjoy, at the same time have heart and empathy, mm -hmm. and basically be the best of both worlds. I, I, there's, a, there's a short scene in my book that I wrote. I was on a date Early in my journey of figuring out what works with dating, I was on a, a first or second date with a really cool, attractive, successful real estate investor. And I, she's, she, she had clearly been hurt by men before. And she said, you're not, a, um, you're not a wolf in sheep's clothing, are you? And I was trying to find something witty and clever to say. And I said, actually, I'm a, um, I'm a sheep in wolf's clothing. I didn't have a deeper meaning. I was just trying to be clever. And she sort of like swooned and purred and said, oh my God, you, that's what we want. We want you know, a guy who's kind of tough and strong on the outside, but inside tender and soft. And that's really what I learned women want. They want a man who, has, who believes in himself, has that backbone, has that external strength, but inside he can be vulnerable. 
he can express and listen to emotions. And then if you, if you find the, the way to connect with women on both of those wavelengths, then you've got a big edge over 99% of other single men. Hmm. I just thought of another business venture for you because not just a dating coach for the single guys, you could like almost be a coach for husbands out there who are currently married and need a little bit, a little bit of help too. So just food for thought. So I think that's, I think, yeah, I, I was a briefly a husband. I wouldn't say nine weeks is enough to speak with a lot of authority, <laughs> but the concepts that help in dating, authenticity, presence, listening, understanding your partner's needs and understanding how you can meet her needs and have her help her meet yours. These are concepts that work in relationships and marriage, not just in dating. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So a guy's single, he finds himself single for the first time in a while. Maybe it's, he just got out of a long-term relationship or he got divorced and he's not feeling great about himself. His confidence is a little low. What's the first thing that he can do? He needs to grab a piece of paper and write down what I call the awesome list. Write down 25 reasons why you're an awesome catch for women in general, for your next date, your next potential partner. When a man is single and struggling with dating, he tends to focus on what he thinks he lacks. He tends to focus on, oh, am I good looking enough? Am I too introverted? Am I not rich enough? Do I have too much of a spare tire? And when a man does that, he doesn't focus on what he offers. So write down a list, one to 25. Number one, I speak three languages. Number two, I make a mean spaghetti and meatball carbonara. Number three, I like and respect women. There's no wrong answer to this list, but simply writing out 25 reasons why you're an awesome choice for women shifts your focus from what you think you're, you're not enough in and focuses you, focuses you on what you offer. And that's the beginning of building that confidence from the inside is first understanding, hey, I have a lot to offer women. I'm enough. Hmm. So, I mean, that's a great exercise for anyone, not just men, you know, for anyone who's feeling like they're, they're lacking something. So I love that. So um, do looks matter? Looks are kind of like, having good looks is kind of like having a jacuzzi. It's nice to have, but it's overrated. Uh, I'm not gonna say no to a jacuzzi, but I'm probably gonna get sick of it after a while. Looks are very, very overrated and they're not essential to getting a great girlfriend, getting lots of dates, having, having options, having romantic options as a man. The great news is, guys, is that women are not nearly as shallow as we are. Uh, <laughs> men are very visual. I'm a man. I enjoy the superficial things I see out in the world. I, I love looking at a beautiful woman. Who, who does, what man doesn't? And I'm not saying women don't value looks in a man, but I, my sense, Renee, and you tell me if you, what your view is on this, my sense is that for women, looks is on the list, but it's not even top five. Maybe not even top 10, depending on the woman. I feel like women want kindness above all mm -hmm. else. They want strength. They want a sense of certainty. They want a sense of support. They want to laugh. They want to flirt. They want to feel sexy. And these are all things that men can accomplish in their dating life, whether they look like Brad Pitt or they look like Brad Garrett. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so true. I mean, I think you just hit the nail on the head. I think everything you said is accurate. It looks only get you so far. And look at how many beautiful people out there who are just, they have such ugly souls. You know, those, those are really ugly people and, and that's, you're not going to get beyond the first date if you're, you're someone like that. And I think, I think you're so right. So um, let's talk about first dates then. What advice do you have for a man on how they can show up as their best self for a first date? And what is a really good first date? A really good first date is first and foremost, having fun. Uh, I, I like to use what I call the three P's. If a man goes into a first date and he accomplishes the three Ps, then he needs to look at that date as a success, no matter whether she falls in love with him or isn't interested. The three Ps are number one, playfulness slash fun, having a good time. If you go on a date and you just lost your job and your dog died and your, the, your stock, stocks just crashed, I'm sorry that happened, but leave that at home and be playful, be fun, have fun on a date, it's a date. No negativity, in other words. Uh, number two is presence, just listening. 
listening to what she's saying, being in the present moment with her. A lot of men focus too much on, oh, what's the witty, cool, attractive line to come up with? And if you just get present with a woman and listen to what she says, often those charismatic, cool, witty lines will come out of the moment because you're not straining. Um, so number two is to be uh, present. And third is just be positive. Have a sense of positivity and optimism about yourself, about the date. I don't look at any date as a bad date. If, she, if, if we fall madly in love and spend the night together, that's a great date. If we don't connect and we just aren't each other's type, I don't see it as a personal indictment on me. And it's certainly not a personal issue with her. It might just be that we're different people and we have different types. And maybe I just made a new friend. Or maybe, or at the very least, I'm one date closer to that fantastic, passionate, amazing relationship. Mm -hmm. So I always come back to those three Ps, playfulness, presence, and positivity. Have you seen the world of dating shift in uh, the world of the pandemic and social distancing? Absolutely. As, as you can tell by looking at my Afro and my beard that <laughs> I have a lockdown look going, lockdown chic. And obviously COVID has affected pretty much every aspect of society. In dating, it has made us go much more slowly because we have to watch out for our personal health, of course. But I think there's one silver lining to the pandemic in dating, which is that I don't think people are hooking up as much. Mm. There's, there's not as much, because we have to watch, watch our health, we're not going to just jump on Tinder and jump into bed with the first person we meet because we want to screen really carefully for the person we meet. So we're getting to know each other. Basically, courtship is coming back. It's almost like the pandemic has brought us back into the 90s, except it's the 1890s mm. when courtship was a thing. And I hope that this doesn't entirely uh, leave us when the pandemic is over. I, I'm, look, I'm a big believer in sowing oats and having fun and if two people want to hook up, but hey, you do you. But I do believe in connection more than anything. Connection and authenticity are kind of my two big um, pillars of teaching and, and what I think men need to focus on. And if anything, the pandemic has taught us that, hey, we have to go slowly now. We might only have video dates for another couple of months, or we maybe we'll meet for a date and we're both wearing masks and we have to actually listen to each other and find out if we like each other as people without that physical connection. And I hope that mindset actually continues once everybody's vaccinated and the pandemic is gone. Do you see people doing virtual dates? Or are they actually, like, is that happening? Absolutely. There's a lot of virtual dating going on. On the dating app that I'm a coach for called The League, uh, The League does virtual speed dating two nights a week. It's called League Live, and people can jump on and have three to five quick video dates. And it's actually, <laughs> again, I wish we were living in a non-pandemic world, but if you can sit on your couch and have three to five quick two minute dates with people and the, the, the beer and liquor is cheaper at your apartment. <laughs> um, and it's very efficient to have video dates too, because you find out quickly if there's chemistry, if they look like their photos and they can look at you and get a sense for whether or not they, she wants to see you. So I think video dating is great because it allows you to focus on the art of talking and, and conversation and connection, which is really the cornerstone of a good date is a emotional conversational connection. And you can find out in two or three minutes if you wanna spend the time and money to go out and meet that person in person and basically uh, have a lot more good in real life dates. Mm. It almost sounds like the introverts like dream. You don't have to actually leave your house. <laughs> That's true. So. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to go for the kiss from your couch right. <laughs> unless you want to lean in at your phone, which, you know, hey, whatever, whatever you want. And your dog can uh, be with you. <laughs> you don't even have absolutely. to leave. You get to, you get to bring your dog on the date. And if your dog growls at the person on the other end of the phone, then Over. you know, hey, yeah, deal breaker. <laughs> it's over. All right. So you brought up dating apps. Um, and I think that's a great point. So how does someone put a profile out there um, that really reflects who they are and attracts the right type of person? Great question. With, here's the first thing that men and women need to understand about what works on dating apps. 
which is not to think of it as dating so much as thinking of it as digital marketing. Until you meet that person or have that first phone conversation or, the, or that video date, you're not really dating. Your video marketing, sorry, you're digitally marketing your profile. So think of it as, don't think of it, don't think of it as what's in it for you. Creating your, your online dating profile, think what will resonate with my target audience, the kind of women I want to date. It's really not for you. It's for her if you're a single man. So the most important thing, 80% of success with dating apps is choosing five to six really good high quality photos. And the most important photo is that first featured photo. Most and apps, not the one from high school? Not the one from high school. <laughs> not the one in your dark <laughs> dungeon of a garage. Um, <laughs> I had a client named Kevin last year and successful guy, doctor, divorced, attractive, and he was getting no matches and no options on the dating apps. And I said, hey, let's take a look at your photos. And I looked at his photos and the first shot was him wearing a beer stained sweatshirt in his garage. It was dark. And I said, Kevin, you look like Dexter in his kill room. You do not look you do not look like a dating prospect for women. No wonder you're not getting matches. All he did is he threw on a nice button down shirt, went outside, took some nice portraits from the waist up. You want to basically look first date great in your first photo. What would you wear on your first date? Wear that. Get some nice portraits taken of you outside from about the waist up. Make it an authentic smile. Women can tell if your smile is a say cheese, fake forced smile. Those don't work as well. And Kevin did that. He added a couple other good photos of hobbies and passions of his. And he had 12 to 15 matches the next day just wow. from upgrading a couple of photos. Kevin was really beating himself up before we did that. He said, what is it about me? Am I just too old? Am I ugly? Am I unattractive? And I said, no, it's not you. It's the photo that makes you look like a serial killer. That's yeah. what's hurting you. And, and you know what? The photo of like the on the beach, no shirt doesn't work either. Because I was on right. eHarmony for a while. And those are the ones that a lot of men like to put those photos up. If it's like the, hey, it's, it's, I'm out on the beach and I'm not, I don't have, like, that's not a good look either. It, well, it depends on his body and depends on the context, right? Yeah. So if it's a shot of him spiking a volleyball and it's, it's in the moment and it's candid and real, mm -hmm. you'd probably be okay with that. If it's a shot that says, hey, look at my pecs, look at my six pack, or in my case, one pack, um, that's <laughs> not going to work as no. well. No, no. So you, you, want to, you want to mostly keep your shirt on, mm -hmm. um, especially, <laughs> I, I can live with a, a shirtless beat shot if the shot is right. No shirtless shots in the bathroom. <laughs> no <laughs> no shirtless mirror shots we don't no. want to see you in the bathroom at all and another pet peeve of women I, maybe you've seen this renee a lot of men like to show photos of them holding the fish they just caught there's a lot of guys with fish yeah. uh one of the, ch the chapter in my book about uh, the chapter about online dating in my book the chapter is titled it's not you it's the halibut you're holding <laughs> it's a great stop, title. Yeah, stop showing women that you can catch a fish we get it you're a provider uh instead sh go with great portraits go with shots of you doing something you love women want to know what you're passionate about women want to know what you love if you looked at my dating profile you'd see me doing karaoke but well dressed and not drunk <laughs> you'd see me doing improv which is a passion of mine uh, playing tennis is a photo I've used in the past. So go with nice portraits and photos that show you doing what you're passionate about because passion is contagious in a good way. Uh, passion is attractive. So show those passions and show those authentic portraits. Now you say that you don't, a man does not need to be James Bond cool. Is that true? Yes, that's correct. Unless he's a naturally cool guy, which is fine. But a lot of men feel like I need to meet some standard that society says is attractive to women. I need to be alpha male brash, or I need to be James Bond cool. And if that's genuinely authentically who you are, fine, be that guy. But most guys aren't James Bond cool. Uh, most guys are gonna be, I don't know, a dorky dad joke telling dad. 
or in my case, a dad joke telling non-dad. Um, <laughs> some guys are going to be introverted or like brainy, nerdy kind of um, thinkers. Um, what you want to do is make sure that whatever, whoever you are at your core, that you're leaning into, buying into and leaning into that genuine sense of self. And if you try to do an impersonation of James Bond cool or brash bad boy, women are gonna notice that there's something off. There's a, a term you might know called incongruence. You're gonna come across as just a little bit off. Um, have, you ever, have you ever met somebody in life, whether it's dating or non-dating, and you couldn't figure out what it was, but something about them was creepy or off kilter. You couldn't oh, put yeah. your finger on it, right? What happens to men on dates is they, they go on a first date with a woman and he tries to do an impression of who he thinks she wants. And that creates this sort of fuzziness or incongruence. And she's not sure what it is, but she feels like she's not getting the real article. So you always want to be the real article uh, and, and dial that up to 10 uh, mm -hmm. as much as you can. Um, so unless you're that James Bond cool guy, don't be that James Bond cool guy. <laughs> be, the nerd, be the nerd you are because lots of women like nerds. I can speak as the king of nerds. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point too. So it, to, to bring the conversation to something a little bit more serious, we have this, this culture right now of a Me Too movement. How does a man walk though that line of dating appropriately and dating in that era? One word is empathy. The first thing a single men need to do is understand that the Me Too movement, it affects us guys, but it's not about us guys. It's about a long overdue societal recognition of the abuse and harassment and awful things that women and girls have had to deal with. That's first and foremost, just, just simply understanding that that's what it's about. The reason I say that is because some men go on dates now and they make it about themselves. They make me too about themselves. And they might say things like, well, I had a really good first date with you, but you're going to have to kiss me because I don't want to get in trouble. And mm. that misses the point of the movement. Women aren't saying you can't kiss us. Right. Women are saying just empathize with us understand that we're people too. We need to be treated with empathy and kindness. So that's one just sort of intellectual shift that I want guys to understand. On a more practical basis, I think men need to understand that men can still be men. We can still ask women out. We can still be gentlemanly. Mm -hmm. We can still go for the kiss when the window opens. I can share a, a tip on that if, you, if men want to hear it. We can still basically, women still want men to be men, but in the Me Too era, women want men to be empathetic men and always noticing how a woman is feeling so that, that a truly authentic, attractive man in the Me Too era, he's going to be the kind of guy who goes for it and takes risks and puts himself out there, but he's also going to be that empathetic man who knows how a woman feels and also knows when to pull back and recalibrate and make sure she always feels comfortable. And what's that tip for the first kiss? So here's a really good first kiss tip. First kisses were so hard for me when I got into this because I, I knew I had to go for them, make the move, but I also didn't want to be that creepy guy who makes women pull back. And I got plenty of, <laughs> I, got, I got the cheek plenty of times. Um, my favorite first kiss move is, let's say you're a couple hours into the date, you feel like it's going well, and you want to go for it, but you're not sure you're going to get the kiss. So you don't want to get the cheek. So what you do is you say to your date, you smile at her, flirt a little bit, smile and say, hey, close your eyes. And she'll respond to that in some way, shape or form. If she closes her eyes, she's basically saying, you may kiss me now. And then you go in for the kiss and the beautiful moment. If she doesn't close her eyes, or if she giggles and says, what, why, why should I close my eyes? Then you crack a joke. You say, oh, cause I want to steal your purse or because um, I, um, I'm going to take my shirt off. I don't want you to look at me, make up some joke. But the thing is, if she says, if she says no to closing her eyes, she's not saying, I don't want to kiss you necessarily. She's just saying, I'm not ready yet. Hmm. And by saying, close your eyes, you kind of have your cake and eat it too. You get to show her that you had the guts to sort of try, but you also didn't get the, the cheek. 
So it's a rejection proof way to maybe get the first kiss, but even if you don't, not get the cheek. Works and, really well. And what if she kind of squints, like half close, one eye open? <laughs> then kiss her chin or half, of, <laughs> or half of one lip. That's, yeah, it should be proportional. <laughs> um, okay, so um, how does someone work with you? Oh, it's super simple. All they need to do is go to my website, datingtransformation.com, and they click the book a call button, and we hop on the phone, and we do a quick free strategy call where I ask, I ask several questions about his dating life, find out what his goals are, find out what his problems are, and we talk about going out and working together as with me as, as his personal hitch. Uh, now yes. you're, you don't have like the, you're not like the microphone in his ear on the dates, right? Like whispering what he's supposed to say. You're not that Yeah, I can, I can be. <laughs> not with a microphone. I, I'm not good enough with technology to do that yet. But pre-COVID and soon post-COVID, I go out with clients side by side, shoulder to shoulder, not on dates, but singles bars, coffee shops, Starbucks. Uh, a lot of men really, really want to go out and meet women in real life and approach, but they're really afraid to. It's probably one of the biggest pain points I see, Renee, one of the biggest problems men come to me for is the, there's beautiful women all around them, women who intrigue them at the coffee shop, at the gym, in the park, at the bookstore, but guys just don't know how to start that conversation. And we work on that in my program. And I can share some tips right now, but uh, so what we do is we go out and I help them. I show them. Sometimes I'll tell them what to say. I'd much rather it come from them because if it comes from him, if it's what he's thinking and feeling, then it's going to land more genuinely with a woman rather than me whispering in his ear. But that said, I've done a little bit of the Cyrano de Bergerac thing too. So you're, the, you're a professional wingman. I am. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk about your book. It's coming out in May um, from Simon & Schuster. What's it about? Yeah, it's called Dating Sucks, But You Don't. And it's a dating guide for men in the Me Too era. And it's about how nice, solid guys can grow in confidence and learn how to connect with women and get a great girlfriend. Basically be able to, instead of settling for women, which all too many men do, they settle for the best they can get, or sometimes they settle for loneliness. It's about being able to settle down with a wonderful woman who's a great match for you based on, you know, a few good options in your life once you've met a few women. So it's about confidence, abundance, and getting a great girlfriend. Fabulous. And it's a, I yeah, it's a roadmap. Basically, it's a roadmap to go from here you are, lack of quality dates and maybe a lack of clarity in, in how to flirt, how to approach. And we take the book takes you step by step from where you are now to, hey, I've, gosh, I'm dating Erica. And I have my third date with Michelle. But wow, there's just something about Allie. Allie and I feel like we really have a closeness and a connection. I think she might be the one. That's what I want to bring guys to that point of having, a, having some great choices and then finding the one. And you're saying you do this in a way that is not slimy or sleazy or using pickup lines. And, but you have had gone to trainings or worked with people who have taught that. So I'm just really curious now, like what's the one thing that you learned, like doing it the slimy way? Like who gave <laughs> you like, like the worst advice ever? Not who, but oh, what was the worst advice? The worst advice ever was, I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice boy from Ohio. And I worked with a an infamous dating coach. I won't name his name, but he's a famous pickup artist. He was even in Time Magazine as quote the most the most hated man in the world because he was so polarizing. And he basically said to me, "Connell, go out for a month. You're too nice. Go out go out for a month and just be a dick to women. Just be a jerk. Be dominant, polarizing, and say obnoxious things." And I was willing to try almost anything because I thought, "Hey, he's the expert, right?" And I went out for about two weeks. And I, I said polarizing things and I was insulting, trying to be polarizing and, and brash. And I remember I was being obnoxious to a woman I had approached at a bar. And I was being so awful that her friend came up behind me and poured a glass of pitcher of ice water down my shirt. Ooh. Basically said, get the hell out of here. You're a jerk. And I realized, you know what? 
I deserve that. Uh, that's not what works. And it was after that moment when I had my, my you know, the, the Seinfeld episode where George Costanza realizes he realizes he needs to do the opposite. Right. I yeah. said, I'm just going to do the opposite. I'm just going to be totally me. I'm going to be the nerdy, uh, dorky, introverted, sometimes kind of a little bit um, hipsterish uh, guy I am and put that guy out there. And once I made that shift, uh, that's when I really started to see the personal changes in myself. And I saw women responding to me in a much different way. And so it was in a weird way, working with some of these sketchy pickup guys, they taught me what not to do. So I could kind of boomerang and find out, okay, mm. that doesn't work. I'm going to find out what does work. Fascinating. And so a final question, or before I get to my final question, how do we follow you on social media and what's your website? Yeah, datingtransformation.com. Uh, if anybody wants to read any men or women out there, but it's geared toward men, I do a column called Ask the Dating Coach on datingtransformation.com. Just go there and click on my column. And every week, it's like the Dear Abby of dating questions. How do I approach? How do I stop getting ghosted? How do I uh, make that first move? How do I go for the kiss? Uh, how do I uh, get out of the friend zone, which is a huge thing for men? Uh, so they can definitely read my column. That's the thing I'm most proud of. And uh, if you want to check out the league, the league.com, I also write for the league.com on their blog. Awesome. And so my final question for you is what is the number one tip that you have for men who are just entering the dating world um, again, maybe um, for the first time after a divorce? What should they be doing first? Great question. I've coached many divorced men and I think that after they write that 25 awesome things about me list, which every guy should do, but especially a newly divorced guy, I think that the smartest thing for a man to do who's just coming out of a relationship, sorry, coming out of divorce, is just take, take small steps. Get some forward momentum. I recommend that men jump on a dating app of their choice, find out what app and platform most speaks to you, uh, maybe it's Tinder. I, per I personally, besides the league, I'm a big fan of Hinge and I'm a big fan of Coffee Meets Bagel. I would get on the dating app that resonates with you, take some really good photos of yourself because if you have really good photos and you write a good bio, you're almost guaranteed to get some new leads, mm -hmm. some new options, get, get some likes. When a man is divorced, he might he might have forgotten uh, the good old days back when he had a lot of dates in his youth or he might have lost some of that mojo You need to get some mojo back. So do your 25 awesome things list jump on an app take really quality photos Once you start getting some matches on a good on a dating app all of a sudden you kind of stand taller Chest puffs out a little bit and think hey look who's messaging me look who wants to have a video date or an in real life date And that's a big boost for your confidence Awesome. Thank you so much. I will drop your uh, book information and your website information all in the show notes. So thank you, Connell, for sharing your words of wisdom with us today. No, thank you for what you do, Renee. Uh, I love your podcast. I'm so psyched that I could be here with you today. Thank you.